doing, Bubba? Doing all right? I'm all right. I know. It feels that way. <laughs> yeah. Just let me know when everybody's good to go. All right. Everybody's good. All right. Thank you all for coming out today uh, for this announcement. Uh, since Memorial Day, we have seen an alarming uptick of COVID-19 cases in our community. Uh, and to dispel a few myths that you might hear in the, in the media is this is not due to more testing in our area. Hospitalizations do not lie, and our area is seeing an alarming rise in COVID-19 hospitalizations. On June 12th, we achieved a two-month low at 129 COVID hospitalizations, but today, just 25 days later, we are at 221. That is only three shy of our high point during this pandemic. Moreover, we have had 11 deaths since June 30th. And that breaks my heart. That's almost two deaths a day in our community. These increases are obviously related to community spread and this time calls for us to act. After consulting with many of our area businesses, consulting with many of our area leaders, I am issuing an executive order requiring that customers wear masks or face coverings when entering a business establishment. It also requires businesses to post signage at all entrances, clearly indicating requirements and prohibitions. This executive order goes into effect Wednesday, July 8th at 5 p.m. and stays in effect until August 8th at 11.59 p.m. On Wednesday as well, I've spoken to several Caddo commissioners. We hope to be joined by the parish uh, with a similar order as well. It applies to all businesses that interact with the public, to all customers, with the exception of those with medical conditions that prevent one from wearing a mask. The Shreveport Police Department will be enforcing this mandate and businesses will be issued documented warnings on their first violation and up to a maximum fine of $500 on their second violation. Citizens uh, are asked, we're asking citizens to call SBD at 673-7300 to report any violations. And we are also seeing an uptick among city employees as well during this time. Uh, so we're taking greater precautions at the city level. Sportran will also be requiring anyone riding public transportation over the age of two to wear a mask or a face covering. This is not about politics. This is about our city. We can't afford to lose any more of our friends, our family, our coworkers, our neighbors, nor can we afford local businesses to shutter and close down if we go backwards. Masks effectively slow the, slow the spread of COVID-19, and if we all wear masks, we can not only protect our health, but we protect the health of our economy and our friends. This is scientifically proven. I cannot in good conscience continue to go another day in our city without us taking these strong precautions to protect our health, our public safety, and our city. At this time, I'll pass it over to Dr. White uh, to comment if she has any comments or questions uh, for uh, anybody um, pertaining to health care. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I just want to applaud the mayor for taking this step. Um, as the pu public health director, every one of these tests comes across my desk. Every death has to be reviewed by my office. We see each one of them and they become very personal to us. So I take this uptick very seriously. Our numbers have really taken a backslide. We have gone back into a place where we were in the early spring which is not where we wanna be in the middle of the summer, in the middle of the heat, when we thought this virus would be at, you know, taking a little bit of a respite for us, and it isn't. So what are we gonna be like in the fall? And for those of you that think that we are getting close to herd immunity, we are far from it. It takes a minimum of 60% of your um, community to have had antibodies, developed antibodies to this virus to see a true herd immunity, and that's the minimum. So we're nowhere near that in any of our communities in the state. So that, that argument needs to go out of your repertoire. <laughs> it's not true. Um, this is not a political issue. This is a health issue. 
if you are listening to people who are telling you that it is wrong to wear a mask because of one political party or another, don't listen to them because you need to be worried about your own health. You need to be worried about the health of your neighbors, your friends, your loved ones, your community. When you walk into a church, a place of worship, and every, you know 35% of the people are wearing masks and 65 aren't, you need to turn around and walk out and worship at home. If you walk into a store, you need to make sure that they're meeting these guidelines. If not, let the police know because they need they will help us mandate, you know, enforce this mandate. You know, I know nobody wants to keep doing these restrictions. Nobody wants to take even further restrictions, you know, further steps back and harsher restrictions. But it's really up to us. It is up to each one of us whether we do that. If we start following these guidelines, these mandates, and we do the right thing, then we will see those changes. We were seeing them. Region 7, this area was leading the state. We were the only region decreasing in our numbers when everyone else was still increasing because we were doing the right thing. And when everybody got tired of it and everybody wanted to go to the lake and everybody wanted to have their parties and their weddings, all of this slid back. So we need to get back to where we were. We can start being the leader again in the state if we follow these mandates. And I think the mayor's taken a great step forward in helping us meet those goals. Council Walker, from the, using your time here in your insights and reports, what groups are sort of leading the attack on enforcing the guidelines? So if we look at, if I look at my testing stats right now, 51% um, of our positives are in 18 to 39 year olds. And we know why, because they're the ones that want to be out and about and doing. They don't have as many health issues. They think it's not going to affect them as much. But let me tell you, I talked to a, a teenager this last week who went to Florida with a group of friends, thought I'm young, it's no big deal, even if I get it, like all teenagers are thinking right now. And on the phone, she was almost in tears with me saying, this is the sickest I have ever been. I feel like I'm about to die. And my answer to her was, you need to tell everybody you know how terrible this disease is. Because even though she didn't go into the hospital, she was horribly sick. And these upticks that we're seeing, when 51% of our cases are young people, young healthy people, we're still seeing clients in hospitalizations, who's going in the hospital? Young people. So um, it's not just in a, a, you know, a mild virus to everyone. And the problem is, I can't look at you and know who's going to be sick. I have 92 year olds that you think would not make it through it, do fine. You have my husband, 40 days on event. Teenagers now going into the hospital. I have a friend who has 20 year old twins, both in the ICU, one on ECMO. So, you know, <laughs> it's, not, it's not a benign virus. Dr. Walker, I had a fellow in the Forbes uh, presenter who was short of his attempts at work not doing it or shortage of retirement. He was half the age and short of his attempts at a Forbes night or being able to, could you shed some light on that for me? So uh, every hospital has to purchase their own testing kits and reagents. Every hospital has had issues where times where they're viral transport media or their swabs they get low on one or the other or the reagents to run the test. It always works out. They never run out either through uh, the state stepping in and helping them or their um, vendors coming through and getting it to them on time. So right now everybody has what they need. It's always a balance. <laughs> We're always, you know, keeping the, the balls in the air, but right now we've been able to do that. Are we at the highest point? So we've been, we've always done a really good job in Region 7 for testing. Shreveport, I mean, Caddo, Bossier, and, that, and it actually has spread to all of Region 7, all the way down to Natchitoches and Sabine. We are continuing to, to push to increase our testing capabilities. As everybody in the country now comes on board with testing, Texas, 
Arkansas, Florida, Alabama, Arizona, places who maybe weren't doing the testing like Louisiana was doing, our testing turnaround times for some of the commercial labs are taking longer. So we are continuing to look for options for labs for, for tests to be sent to, as well as um, you know, looking at how the state can test more through the state lab, as well as you know, we have LSU, which is testing here. And so you know, we're always working to try to get those, make those tests available to anyone who needs them. Absolutely. I, I will always encourage, first off, the blood banks needs blood because right now at this time people haven't really been thinking about blood, so it's always a good time to donate. Secondly, if you have had the disease and you have antibodies, please consider donating plasma. As I've said a hundred times and I'll say it again, it saved my husband's life without a doubt. He received three rounds of it. Each time he was not... Um, he was dying, let's just be real, he was not doing well. So when he received that plasma, he was able to stabilize and um, get through that tough period until he could fight the virus off and, and heal. The mayor, has, uh, have you contacted uh, Lowe Walker to see if the baby's gonna follow? Uh, yes, My, myself and uh, Mayor Walker, we've been speaking. I mean, just obviously, Shreveport's not in a vacuum. Um, it, what we do as a region absolutely will impact how the viral spread is here within our community. As we all know, Texas is our neighbor. Uh, the governor of Texas has mandated masks in the state of Texas. Uh, so yeah, I've reached out to regional leadership as well. I've reached out to not just my council members, and we have Councilman Jerry Bowman here who's been extremely supportive of this move, but I've reached out to Cattle Commissioners as well and even some Bozier council members. So uh, the more consensus that we can get on this, the the, the, the broader we can implement this policy in the region, I think the safer that we'll be, and we'll st really start to see those numbers go down. And I just wanna emphasize, we as a community, we have done this before. Uh, you know, the governor has, has given us, you know, praised us for us slowing the viral spread in our community. We made the New York Times, we were number seven in the country uh, for the slowest viral spread in communities. Like, we have been here before. If we do this, if we do the, take the precautions that we know are necessary, uh, we can pull ourselves right back out of this and get on solid footing so that we won't backslide and can buy ourselves time before we see a vaccine or whatever have you. But we have to react to these numbers. We have to react to what we're seeing in the community right now. So, Mayor, this question would be just based on uh, consumer reports of weaknesses with the, the consumer reports on that supply and the facility. Is that the basis of your statement? Yes, and I mean, there's other, uh, there's other uh, measures as well. I mean, the, the fire marshal, they go out to inspect businesses. Uh, Shreveport police will, do, will be somewhat proactive with it as well. Uh, but yet, yeah, this very much, we are relying on compliance from the community. Let, let that not, let, let's be very clear about that. Uh, we're relying on the community not to be selfish in this moment, not to look at this as some burden, but to look at this as a way to keep not just you healthy, but your neighbors healthy, your family's healthy, you don't want, it would be a terrible feeling for you to pass this virus on to a family member or a friend that end up not making it at the end of the day. So uh, yeah, we are very much relying on compu community compliance with this uh, in addition to SPD and various other things. So when you go in a restaurant, wear your mask and take it off when you eat? When you eat, yes. When you go in a restaurant, obviously you're in a restaurant, you're eating, you can take the mask off when you're eating. Please put the mask back on when interacting with, uh, with the employees of that particular restaurant. This is another thing that business owners continually talked about, restaurant owners continually talked about, is they're afraid for their employees' health uh, because it wasn't mandatory for their customers to be wearing a mask. So this also helps them protect their, they, these business owners protect their employees who they very much care about. No, so I was on a call with the governor last week. Uh, he spoke to myself, uh, the largest, the, I think it's six or seven largest cities in Louisiana, Sheriff's Association, various organizations where he talked about just this. Uh, so they're actually targeting uh, a bunch of college age kids. They're seeing a lot of outbreaks in those crowds, a lot of like little small parties, nothing massive, but they're seeing outbreaks in, in little, uh, in groups and clusters like that. So uh, they are targeting right now, just like in the outbreak we've seen, the disproportionate impact on African-American community, and we start to target messaging there.
they are starting to target messaging on the young crowd. And I'm, I'm a millennial. Uh, we've recorded videos myself to say, hey, millennials, you are not invincible to this disease. And even if you're the, 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 the uh, young lady that Dr. White pointed out that said, hey, I was young, I went to Florida, I didn't know uh, that the virus would be this bad. Again, just imagine if you were that young lady and you had the virus and the first person you came home to visit was your mother or was your grandmother or was somebody else's mother that you passed in a store or somebody else's grandmother that you passed in a store not knowing that you had this virus. So this is a time we're really trying to get the community to go beyond self and really think about the health and welfare of Shreveport. because they were exposed. So, you know, we have buried two uh, young mothers in Caddo Parish who were pregnant, um, had to deliver their babies premature, and then the mothers passed away from COVID. So, you know, you also have to consider, it's not just, you know, now this baby's life is at risk, the mom has passed away, and the father's life has forever been changed. He's now a single parent, raising a premature baby. It's just something that, you know, we can prevent. We can prevent all these stories. We can prevent my husband not being able to walk after 40 days on a vent. We can prevent the 16-year-old the from being terribly ill. We can prevent these young moms from dying, people's grandparents dying without ever seeing their families. This needs to stop, and we can make a change. We can do it. We've done it before. This region has led the state. We can do it again. I, I just want to make a comment and piggyback off that, what she just said. Uh, Dr. White is clearly in a very uh, unique position uh, with her professional and personal life, the experiences she had, she's had. I'm in a very unique, unique position, uh, you know, being the mayor of a, a roughly 200,000-person city where we have seen this loss on a scale that we would take back any day if we possibly could. Uh, I've heard some, some rumblings in the community that maybe it's because, you know, a person or their family had an experience loss, but I assure you, you do not want to gamble to be that person. Uh, you absolutely do not. This is a very real thing. We have been in the mud with this virus for months now. Uh, we've talked to, you know, I've talked to people who've lost, you know, parents, siblings, best friends and this is no joke at all so if you again it's just not the time to be selfish or to look through your own personal lens it's a time to trust the experts it's a time to be selfless and to really do all that you can to protect your community And I'll, and I'll speak from the, from the government side. Um, I've heard other leaders in, the, in this community, other leaders of our state, uh, and even federal leaders talk about if these numbers continue to rise, us seeing more stringent things being put into place than what we even saw at the beginning. We do not want to go there. Our economy cannot afford that. You know, I, from a health perspective, we cannot afford that, this loss. So it is imperative that we act, we act fast, uh, and we do it effectively together. And Dr. White, I'll let you talk about the health side you know, right now we're, we're okay in Region 7 as far as our ICU and our vents because we have, there's been a change in the way we treat people and also we have younger, healthier people who are getting sick right now. That could all change overnight as all these people who have come home and bring it home to their family members, their parents, grandparents, friends, community, those numbers could go up in our ICUs just like it did in a couple of weeks with these numbers rising, we could see those numbers on, in ICU stays and, and vents um, and be in trouble. Region, we have other parts of the state that are already in trouble. And you know, seeing you know, difficulty with how are we gonna admit, do we need to, to stop doing you know, non-emergent procedures again in the hospital? That puts off you know, caring for the health of our people. You know, so that's a whole, you, you can put procedures off for so long and people need those procedures done. It is, it's, it's a domino effect and we can stop those dominoes from falling. We just have to do the right thing. But I do think that there will be stricter um, restrictions if we don't uh, make a change. Council, I was just about to 
Yeah, you want to hear from the perspective of the city council. We have Councilman Bowman, who's also a employee at Ochsner, if you can uh, speak to I can just be very brief and piggyback on uh, Dr. White and the mayor. Um, I heard, I've heard from both sides uh, to where you have some who don't want to wear the mask because it's uncomfortable or it doesn't affect them. Uh, as Dr. White just said, you may have that family member who needs to have a procedure at some point, and if we go back to stopping procedures and not having those procedures, then you are putting your family member at a, at a very vast uh, jeopardy of, of not surviving. Um, I, I get that it's uncomfortable. Of course, um, that's just a new norm. That's how I see it. Uh, I do believe that uh, some people are, I've talked to people in restaurants, I visit frequent restaurants a lot, visit the stores, uh, and I've asked the questions to, to the managers and to the employees themselves. And the same thing, what about us? All of them have on masks or some kind of face covering, we don't. Um, so I, I think that that's, uh, that's important to not just protect yourself, protect others, and to, um, to those who think that it's a race um, disease, it's not. Uh, I've spoken to both sides, and I've spoken to both sides who have been um, infected by this disease. So I do believe that you know we, we all should just uh, comply. And this is starting Wednesday at five, at five p.m. That's it. Thank you. Can Dr. I just White. say two more things, just real quickly? Um, as far as racial differences, racial demographics, right now the state is at fifty-five percent African American. 45% um, non-African-American. Um, so, you know, it's not the 70% that it was just a few weeks ago. Um, so that argument needs to go out of your repertoire as well. And as far as wearing masks and whether you can or can't, really there are very few people who cannot wear a mask. I have friends who are asthmatics. I have friends who have cystic fibrosis, who have all kinds of health issues who work in the hospital and wear these masks 24 seven, to put them on for 15 minutes to go into a store, there's no excuse. There's just very few people who cannot tolerate wearing a mask. And you know, just that, that's not acceptable to me as an excuse. Is there any more questions? Uh, no, we don't have any additional information at this time. Our, our detectives, there's video footage, there's a bunch of um, uh, evidence for them to use. Uh, my, my message uh, to the community, though, as, and I, I made a social media post about it this weekend, um, you know, it was an altercation that happened that turned into a senseless act of violence where a young man, 19 years old, lost his, lost his life. We need the community to talk to their brothers, their sisters, uh, friends, family, about valuing life overall. I mean, that's, that's the topic of this, this conversation that we're having today about COVID-19. We have to consistently value life, uh, whether it's a matter of us combating a virus or whether it's a matter of us combating senseless acts of violence like what we saw this weekend. Um, we need the community to help us. Uh, it's no way that myself or Shreveport Police Department uh, we can stop acts like that. We need you to get involved. If you see something, please say something. Uh, not, even if, not even saying something to the authorities necessarily, but say something to that family member, that friend that you know is walking out of the house with a pistol or with whatever kind of weapon that, they, you know, that, that we continually see being used in our community and just tell them, hey, it is not worth it. It is absolutely not worth it. It's completely unnecessary. I'm working with Chief Raymond right now and Chief Antoine White um, to do all that we can to continually work with other agencies and, and form task force to a, attack this crime this summer. Uh, but again, we cannot do it alone. We need the community to get involved so that we can stop senseless acts of violence like we saw uh, at the mall this weekend and like we've seen uh, at a pretty high tick over the last couple weeks. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to directly tie it to COVID. I'll say this as far as Shreveport goes. Uh, this year, our crime rate is above where it was last year. Uh, but last year was an exceptional year with us being at a 45-year low. So we are seeing more crime this year. Um, and we're going through COVID. We're going through an economic crisis. We know how poverty is tied to violence oftentimes. We know how uh, minimal resources is tied to violence. So it could be that, but at the end of the day, even if you are anxious about what's going on with this virus, uh, even if you're frustrated about that or what's going on in your particular household, if you're struggling you know, to, 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 find, to make ends meet, to take care of your family, again, those senseless acts of violence, like we cannot handle it. Th those are last resorts that will actually completely compromise what you're trying to achieve at the end of the day anyway. Um, so I'm not sure what the root cause of it is, but I do know that the solution lies within all of us. Thank you. Yeah, the, the police, there is, yeah, there is a comment on policing. Uh, one, one additional comment on crime in our community. I will say that uh, we did suspend the task force that we regularly regularly do every quarter uh, because of COVID for the last five months or so. Uh, so that also could have some relationship to the uptick in crime that we're seeing. Uh, but we are resuming that at this time. Uh, we're working on resuming that at this time. So we will hopefully be able to get uh, more uniformed officers out in our streets to kind of curb the violence that we're seeing. So I wanted to add that as a note that I, I can't explain what the uh, task force, I'll just say multiple agencies form a task force uh, to try to find illegal guns and, and various things uh, on the streets. Um, but I, I don't want to go into too many details due to operational security reasons. Um, but uh, yeah, so. so that's why I was getting at. Yeah. It, it is a multiple. It is. It is a multiple agency task force that uh, last year was extremely successful um, that we haven't been able to do for the last couple months because of COVID 19. So uh, that will be resuming and uh, hopefully we see the numbers go back down. All right, thank you, gentlemen, I appreciate it.